A lot of people develop misunderstandings about Splatoon because they don't understand what actually wins games of Splatoon. It's not that you need more splats than the other team or more paint. You can get more splats than the other team, but be stuck on defense the whole match while the other team scores points, gets splatted, and super jumps back in to keep scoring points. You can paint more than the enemy team, but as soon as you walk forward to paint the splat zone, you get stopped immediately. What really decides whether you can score or not is map control, which I'll define like this. You control a part of the map if the enemy team is getting shot at immediately as soon as they try to enter it. You have to make it so your opponents can't get into the parts of the map they need to score points without being shot at. Then, you have to move them far enough away from the parts of the map you need to be able to score points so that they can't shoot at you and stop you from scoring your points. If you control 60% of the map in Turf War, the enemy team only has 40% of it to paint. So as long as you fill it in behind you, they can't possibly win the game without fighting you for control of more of the map. If you control the splat zone, the enemy team can always paint it back. But if you control all the areas on the map the enemy team can paint the zone from, now they have to fight you just for the chance of reaching it. Getting on the tower in tower control is easy, but if the opponent is going to splat you after you've moved it to a score of 94 remaining, and then the numbers advantage they have will help them keep your team out of positions they can defend the tower from, the other team's going to score more points off that play. So you need to control the zone around the tower that the enemy team can defend from before you can push it. In Rainmaker, the Rainmaker carrier will get splatted as soon as they enter a zone the opponent controls, because that weapon moves slower and splats slower than just about any other weapon in the game. To move it forward, you need to control the parts of the map that the defenders can currently shoot at the Rainmaker from. Those positions move as you move forward, so you will need to move forward ahead of the Rainmaker to clear those parts out. Not too far forward though, because then they might slip in past you and you're not controlling the zone around the Rainmaker anymore. To defend against the Rainmaker, you need to control the part of the map it wants to move into. In Clam Blitz, the zone around the basket where the enemy team can score from is relatively small. So when your basket is open, literally just treat it like the splat zone, painting thoroughly to expand your radius of control around the basket further and further, so that if someone approaches the basket to try and score, they have to spend time and reveal themselves to paint their way in and possibly fight you to get control of that area of the map. And you can be shooting at them and controlling that space before they get there if they're trying to paint into a zone that you control. This is why, at higher levels, running to the basket by yourself and trying to score a power clam just before you go down doesn't work. If you don't have control of the enemy basket before you score, you'll get stopped really quickly, and the enemy team will have enough of an advantage by splatting you to force your team further back and counter score for more points. If your team wins a fight, it is imperative that you move forward and take more space quickly. You have a limited amount of time during which you can take space and the other team can't do as much about it because they don't have as many resources to stop you from taking space. If you don't take that space, the other team will respawn and get people back into defensive positions, and you won't have gained anything for winning the advantage. You'll also let them get closer to your side of the map than they would be able to otherwise, making it so that they have to fight less before they've been able to control what they need to control in order to score. Staying inactive and just holding your ground when you have a two-player numbers advantage isn't playing safe. It's actively giving up the advantage that you could be taking. On the flip side, if you're at a significant numbers disadvantage, it's more likely that staying forward and trying to stop the enemy team will lead to you getting overwhelmed and splatted. And now the enemy team will have an advantage for longer and be able to take more space, because where before you could wait for your teammates to respawn and then you'd have the resources to defend again, now they can respawn, but they'll still have to wait for you. And if they go down now, you'll have to wait for them again. And this can just keep on looping, 
letting the enemy team score more and more before you ever stabilize and make a crucial part of the map unsafe for the enemy team again. If you're looking to win games, don't think so much about your KA at the end of the game or the paint you put on the ground. Think about what parts of the map the enemy team needed to be able to have an impact on the objective. And think about whether you were successful in keeping them out of those areas. Think about whether you moved and established control of new territory without getting immediately stopped for trying to do so. Think not about whether you splatted the player that took out your Rainmaker carrier, but about whether you stopped your opponents from ever getting close to the Rainmaker carrier in the first place. Once you and your team start acting on that kind of thinking, your offense will be much more efficient, allowing you to score huge amounts of points in one go. You'll make the enemy team fight just for the chance to stop you from scoring, instead of fighting after they've walked right up to the objective and stopped it before you noticed them. Your defense will be much more thorough, allowing far fewer sneaky plays to recapture the objective. You'll score more points and allow fewer, which is how you'll win more games of Splatoon.